Hello! Hey, I'm Christine. Welcome to Book Talk. Today we're talking about a fairly new series called Delirium by Lauren Oliver. If you haven't read Delirium, it's about this dystopian world, kind of futuristic, where love is considered a disease in the society, in the United States. They made it mandatory that everyone, once they hit 18, they need to have this operation that cures them so they can't catch love. Because love causes pain and violence and hatred and it causes all that problems. It's just really an insane concept. Love is such a big part of our lives. They just have no strong feelings towards anything after that. They're kind of just like zombies doing things because you're supposed to. You don't even love your family. So there's no love marriage, there's just arranged pairs. It's not safe to have the operation until you're 18. So up until then, people are segregated. Boys, girls, you're not allowed to go on each other, you're not supposed to touch. If married couples are seen touching too much, people report them, they'll either get executed or thrown underground. It was just very thought-provoking. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. Lauren Oliver, Delirium. It's going to be a trilogy. The second one's already out. I'm excited to start it. I'll see you next time if you haven't read it. Bye. Okay, so all of you should be Delirium reader or read. So we've got our main character, Lena. It's not Lena. It's not Magdalena. It's Magdalena. Right? So just this whole concept, it's just heartbreaking. That scene with the dog, because you don't love your pets, then I... <sighs> They're just heartless robots, really. That's what they've turned people into, shells that don't give a crap about anything. You know, the way Lauren Oliver drops these bombs, if you don't love your kids, you have no real attachment to them. If they're being annoying and they're like, oh, my mom's gonna kill me, like, your mom could actually kill you because they don't care. She brought up right off the bat, sometimes the cure goes wrong and parents drown their children and it's just right there. Why, why would you continue doing this to people? <sighs> the book of sh- I want to murder it! Oh yeah, they're always listening on our phone conversations. It's just there's no privacy laws at all. People can just bust in, this is a raid, let me just search your entire house. It, it's not till like halfway through the book that they make reference to the Blitz, where the diseased people were all wiped out. But basically, they just committed mass genocide. It sounds like they wiped out all handicapped people. It sounds like the United States performed mass genocide on itself to eliminate all resistance. The music thing, just a nightmare. And the internet is just government run. It's just, that's like the worst nightmare. I couldn't stand listening to her talk in the beginning about her mom and how her mom was diseased and she danced and laughed. If there's too much laughter, if there's too much happiness, there's so much about the world that is so interesting to think about and just so frightening. It's horrifying. And think of how entertainment industry, how many movies must have been destroyed. I did not see it coming that her mom was in the Crips. The Crips are just another... How could they treat people like this? Because people have turned into these heartless blobs that don't give a shit about humanity. If you keep doing this to people, you're kind of shutting off their ability to care. Over time, they're going to give less and less of a shit because they've been brainwashed even before the cure. She mentions the Crips a bunch of time, like, I can't do this or I'll be thrown in the Crips. The first time she said that, I thought she was kidding. Haha, ha, the Crips, but I thought she meant jail. I was expecting her mom to maybe be in the wilds. And that whole scene with the party when she goes to warn them, I just, that they just kill people. They let the dogs loose to kill. Her older sister, that scene with the Advil and the white pills, but actually they were tranquilizers. We've got Grace, who I love, and I knew she was going to help her in the end. And we've got Hannah, who I loved from the very beginning. I wish she went with them. I mean, well, she probably wouldn't have made it out alive. I really want Hannah to come out into the wilds. I don't want her to get the cure. Maybe she'll be able to not affect her. I think maybe if Lena got the cure, it would kind of be like in the uglies where Tally gets the operation, but she's able to overpower it. You can't really shut off love. And if you try hard enough, I think you can overpower it. Just like Lena says that she could see the veil come off her sister for a few moments and then it comes back down. And then we, of course, we have Alex. This is what I was thinking. Okay, so at the end, I don't know how the hell they're gonna get out of there, but I was thinking, you know, they both die or they're both gonna get out. I can't believe Alex is dead. I wasn't like in love with the character. We didn't really get to know him that well. We didn't see enough dialogue for that. Freedom, what the United States is based on, 
has been basically eliminated. You have no freedom of choice in anything. I've always been a decent student. The academic assessors will analyze my strengths and weaknesses and then assign me to a school and a major. So not only does she have to go to the school that they tell her to, but she can't even pick the major that she's going to major in. This whole love cure thing reminds me of like less drastic, but prohibition, an experiment that's going to fail. It's bound to fail because you're taking away so much freedom of choice. It, it might take a little bit longer with this, but it's bound to come crashing down. I pretty much always feel as though a giant revolving gaze is bound to sweep over me at any second, lighting up my bad thoughts like an animal lit still and white in the ever-turning beam of a lighthouse. Can you imagine living here? I would never ever in a million years want to live in this world. Rachel described the procedure. After the procedure, she said, it would all be coasting, all glide, every day as easy as one, two, three. Why would anyone want every day to be easy as one, two, three? Because then nothing matters. Nothing's ever easy, nothing's ever difficult. It's just like Candace is right in the beginning, like you can't be happy without being unhappy. You're just nothing all the time. The idiot who wrote the fucking book of shh. 50 years ago, the government closed the borders of the United States. The borders guarded constantly by military personnel. No one can get in. No one goes out. Every sanctioned and approved community must also be contained within a border. That's the law. And all travel between communities requires official written consent of the municipal government to be obtained six months in advance. Safety, sanctity, community. That's our country's motto. Since when is that your motto of the United States of America? Freedom is the motto. I hate how they say infected. I hate how they say invalids. They call normal people invalids. It's such, it's like a communist dictatorship. This whole thing with Hannah and having to leave Hannah, how they'll forget each other as friends. I was just crying. It was so sad. She'll retreat to West End and make friends with her neighbors and people richer and more sophisticated than I am. I'll stay in some crappy apartment on Cumberland and I won't miss her or remember what it felt like to run side by side. The cured, incapable of desire, and thus rid of both remembered and future pain. How the fuck is this curing people? This is such a sad little community. I don't want this to be called the United States. That's what's the scariest part of it. All the websites, all the content is written by government agencies. So the whole thing's a bunch of propaganda shit. How her mom used to comfort her when she fell down, and, and you can't do that because it's like you care too much about your kids. I love when she first, she finally goes to the party, it really starts to change her mindset. Hearing my name snaps me out of my days and I'm suddenly aware that I'm standing in a huge crush of people. No, not just people, boys and girls, uncured, all of them. Boys and girls talking, boys and girls laughing, boys and girls sharing sips from the same cup. All of a sudden I think I'm like faint. Everyone is basically neutered and they, they have sex because they have to so they can continue the human race because it's expected. Did Alex put this lock here? And I'm like, no, it's a trap, go away. They have the nerve to tie her up like this to the bed. At least tie her down. Why do you have her arms up like that? That's terrible. I'm mean, like, they do that to prisoners, like actual prisoners. I love when she first says the word love because it had dawned on me, like they don't say I love this food, I love this. And like, think about the books. Books must have been burned. All books must have been burned because all books have some aspect of love in it. Everything's just propaganda. Everyone's living in Nazi Germany, except that it's actually the United States. And when they go to the crypt, she's like, how does everybody know you here? He goes, I come by a lot. Lana's like, people don't come by the cribs. It's not exactly up there with the beach. It's not even up there with the public restroom. I love that her mom escaped. I love that she's that that's gonna move on to the next book. I'm so excited to read Pandemonium. She's like, hardly anything penetrates, hardly anything matters. They say the cure is about happiness, but I understand now that it isn't and it never was. It's about fear, fear of pain, fear of hurt, fear, 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 a blind animal existence, bumping between walls, shuffling between ever narrowing hallways, terrified and dull and stupid. For the first time in my life, I actually feel sorry for Carol. I feel sorry for all these people. I love the way Lauren Oliver writes. I love her descriptions. They just flow so beautifully with the rest of the story. Just more minutes, a slow drag, like a weight pulling me under. But then suddenly the light in the bedroom turns the warm color of honey and then the trembling yellow of fresh cream and then begins swirling away from the walls altogether like water going down a drain. What a beautiful sentence. I just love this book. Let me know your thoughts. So Alex is dead. Were you expecting that? Now she's just 
by herself. I really want Hannah out there now. How She's just all alone. Good, good stuff. Thank you to everyone who recommended the series in the comments. Like I said, let me know your thoughts. I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me. 